remember. It's good to remember. But I've come to a time in my life when I'm struggling to remember things. Anybody else? Struggling to remember things. Who can name one thing that I said in those six points? One thing. Flags, fine, half staff. Anything else? Anybody remember that I said? Pause, okay. She, she put together pause and pray, but those were actually two separate things. A moment of silence. No, it's okay. But see, do you see what the memory does? I named six things, and we can remember maybe one of them. Here's a truth. Research from brain science. The forgetting curve by Art Cohn says that within an hour, you will forget 50% of what I have said or presented today. Within an hour. Some of you say, girl, I already forgot. <laughs> Within 24 hours, 70% of what I said, of, or anything that's presented to you. And within a week, 90% will be forgotten. A study from 2009, this is good, ladies, sorry, men, found men are more likely to forget things than women. Men are more likely to forget things than women, even though Women generally have more to remember. It's the modern hectic lifestyles and increased workloads and pressures of everyday life that have us scattered all over the place. Research also finds that adults forget about three things a day. Three things. I think it's more than that. I'm telling you, it's crazy for me now. I really do walk into the room and forget why I walked in there. I really do. You can ask my kids at school, when I'm turning on the smart board, I never put the, I call it the clicker. Where's my clicker? I never put the remote in the same place. I look for that remote every time I put it down. Where did I put it? Those kids, there, it becomes a game. It's there, it's there, Miss Gray. I'm, I'm telling you, I just put it down for five minutes and forgot where I put it. Here's 25 of the most forgotten things. See if any of this is you. Ready? I think it may have been in Britain because the first thing is 25 things most forgotten. Letting a hot cup of tea go cold. Where you put your keys. What you went to shop for, why you went to the store. Washing in the washing machine. Yeah, it's like, oh, I got to start all over. It's mildew, terrible. Taking food out of the freezer. Charging your mobile phone or iPod or whatever else. <laughs> this one, not swearing in front of the kids. Replacing the toilet roll. Ugh, that one gets me. Well, you're usually the one who has to do it. It's like, we're at the, just take it off. You're at the end. Where you parked the car. Mm -hmm. Watering the plants. Your age. How old are you? Let me think. I, I don't know. Your friend's birthday. A recording, recording your favorite program, but you kind of don't need that anymore because you can DVR. But if you're still, you know, well, anyway. Forgetting to take the toast out, burning your toast, not paying attention. To write a thank you letter. The names of your friend's children. Buying milk, locking the car, where you put your wallet, food in the oven, to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> put the toilet seat down. Can't. Take the washing in, so obviously taking the washing in means it was out on the line. But we don't, people even don't even do that anymore. Although it smells so good. Somebody was talking about that memory of running through the clothes. And to turn off the tap water after you've turned it on and you walked away for a second because you were running something on it and to walk away. Any of those ring true? I saw a lot of nodding heads. I saw a lot of agreement with those things. Let's face it. We're forgetful. Okay, I'm forgetful. Anybody here have a great, super fantastic memory? And the older we get, the worse it becomes. The older we get, the... In Scripture, God places an importance on remembering. In Scripture, an importance on remembering. It's not so much about the toilet paper, or not so much about the keys, but it's about remembering him and what he's done. Things to be passed down from generation 
to generation. And we find in Joshua 4, verses 1 through 9. Joshua 4, verses 1 through 9. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing and to carry them over with you and to put them down in a place where you will stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you what do these stones mean tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed the Jordan the waters of the Jordan were cut off these stones are to be a memorial of the people of Israel forever so the Israelites did as Joshua commanded and they took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan don't you love that they did as they Joshua commanded which is what God had commanded, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua. Look at that obedience. And they carried them over with them to their camp where they put them down. Joshua set up the 12 stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at a spot where the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. This time was to be passed down from generation to generation. Have you passed down anything or been passed down something from generation to generation? And I don't think I'm just talking about the family recipes. Have you passed on anything the Lord has done in your life? from generation to generation, or just even one generation. The knowledge of him, your love for him. When you are gone, will there be a stone of remembrance for you? And I don't mean, I'm thinking more figuratively than physically. Are we remembering the places where God has done something in our lives and left a lasting impact? And left a lasting impact because sometimes, don't you forget so long ago when God had healed you of something that maybe was kind of an impossibility when he brought you through something, we have our anniversary dates for sure. We have our birth dates for sure. But God is giving us something new every single day. Some are bigger than others. Some are bigger than others. I started journaling. I got this old one, which is when I started. January 25th, 2002. 2002 my friend gave me this journal book as a gift and I loved it and I started writing and then I went back as I was preparing for this and I started reading the things I wrote for years I talked about me 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 me, me and more me and I realized a lot of eyes a lot of that was in here and then I saw it shift in 2005, as I look back. 2005 on a Tuesday, December 6, I wrote, Dear God, how awesome you are. And I'm saying, I'm sitting in the team something, I can't even read my whole writing because it's so awful, and learning and growing, becoming more in your presence. God, you know ooh, what you want this leadership and team to become. Help us to create your vision. It must have been something for um, church. Lord, we have so much to do. Forgive me when I lack. And in all actuality, from that point on, I never went back to talking about losing the 20 pounds. Me, me, me. 
It was all about praise of God. I got 2014, 2015, and then in 2017, last year, January 13th, I wrote down some markers, some stones of remembrance. I actually titled it that, some stones of remembrance. I remember my brother was praying on a Wednesday, and he was praying for money because he had run short of money. And I called him a few minutes later, and he told me I was just praying for this. I wrote that down. And next, I was on my knees praying about God giving me times to speak. When I was getting up from my knees, my cell phone was beside me, and it rang, asking me to go somewhere and to be a speaker when I got off my knees praying for that. I wrote that down. That was on Thursday. On Thursday, my Uncle Slide, I called him just to check on him, and my Uncle Slide, who is not a believer in God, asked me to pray for him. <laughs> I wrote that down, because that's a time of remembrance. On Friday, on my knees again, I was asked to speak again within the same week. Stones of remembrance. I put down the Holy Spirit is moving in a powerful way. Lord, work through me. Lord, speak to me. Amen. That was last year. Then I was writing down things for this year. I won't even tell you all that I've written down. I don't do it every day. But when I do, when something happens where God has, boy, is it awesome to go back and to see a stone of remembrance for what God has done. And I'm able to tell you, and I'm able to tell someone else, look what God did. You know, often we call it testimonies. We can't wait for just the year at Lily to give our testimony at Cafe Praise. We should be talking about it every day, especially with people who don't know him, who don't know anything about him. Because every time you bring up the word God, and sometimes it's not God that you say. You can say, I'm giving thanks. We're not fearful of bringing up the name of God. But sometimes you know, got to know your audience. Last night I was amongst non-believers, and I knew it. And one of the guys at the table said, as a teacher, Tamar, what would you like parents to know? I left out, love you God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. I said, I would want your kids to know that, but I did say, I said it in a way they could understand. I'd want parents to, what would you like them to teach their kids, he said. I said, I would like them to teach their kids to be kind. They completely understood that. I didn't have to come up with some big lingo. Teach them to be kind to everybody they meet. And then we started talking about, it's not just the words, it's the actions of the parents with everybody else. That the child learns how to be with everybody else. It was a powerful three minute conversation that was just supposed to be at, about teaching. I'm, I'm talking about my friend Carmela who just got laid off. I'm still waiting to hear. Can't wait to tell you what's gonna happen within the next 30 days. She was laid off from her job. She's probably at day 23 now of trying to get a new job, but it was, it was done in such a way that it was clear that it was the hand of God in it because usually at, at her job, did I say this before? I don't think so. Usually at her job, when someone is let go, HR calls you in, the boss calls you in. And then they said, we usually walk the person out the door. There is no, oh, at the end of the week, you'll be let go. No, you're walked out. But Carmela, is friends with the HR director, or is friendly with, and they talk about God all the time. It is the first time in that company history that they said, we're gonna give you 30 days. Don't tell anybody, because we don't do this. I said, Carmela, do you see what God just did? 
you can't tell me that you won't have a job either by the end or you won't be held over. And I told her, write it down. Because this time next year, I want you to look back and I want you to be able to tell everybody I was given 30 days. They, and which is unheard of, number one. The next thing is, is that it allows her to have health care for her daughter, daughters, all the way through the month. No matter when you leave, you're at till the end of that month. So she gets till um, whenever it is, June 30th. When it stops in June, she'll still be in the 30-day whatever. She'll have till the end of the month to get her daughters on her ex-husband's health care. I said, you can't tell me you don't see the hand of God in this. That is not coincidence. That is a milestone. That is a stone of remembrance to tell everybody about. She said she was going to write it down. Before I journaled, there are certain things that I remembered that happened in my life. One was when the church gathered around me and prayed when I was going to have to have an operation. Does anybody remember praying for me? Thank you. Gathered around me with Frank Rickey and prayed for me. And the doctor had said, you are, we're going to be there for hours, taking out fibroid tumors. We're going to be there for hours. And I started crying. I said, you have a terrible bedside manner. I don't like you. And I went to church and I said, I'm having an operation and I need the church to pray for me. The whole church gathered around, laid hands on me and prayed for me. When I went in, I was out in three hours. It was supposed to take way longer than that. I said, that's God. There's my stone of remembrance right there. I remember in college, there's no reason I should have gone back to my last years of college. We had no money. I mean, none. My mother had no money. My father had no money. My first two years were on a scholarship. God granted me favor with the person in charge of finance who became, I mean, whenever I'd see him, I'd say, hi, Mr. Stone. He'd say, hi, Tamar, how are you doing? When he found out that there was no money left, it wasn't 30 minutes before they called me. You're not getting the scholarships anymore. That's done. I said, well, there's no way I can go back to school. I happened to be with my family at that time. It might have been 4th of July or something. I said, I can't go back because we ain't got no money. I started crying because I really wanted to finish. And my mother right then and there said, you know what? God's going to make a way. And even if you can't go back, she said, pray about it. We prayed. 30 minutes later, the same woman called me back and said, Mr. Stone said, you're coming back to school. We found the money. I said, look at God. I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten that. I never wrote that down, but I've never forgotten that. I know that you all have times in your life where the same thing has happened. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense when God makes a way out of no way. So think of things to pass on. Yes, there's those moves of God, but there's the reminder. There's the reminder about the moves of God where you're able to say, what God has done for me, he will also do for you. I'm nothing special. I'm not. He will move in your life the same way. And the problem is, is that God's ready to move in the lives of all these people. They just don't recognize who he is. So they're not even recognizing the blessings they've been given. They're thinking it's luck. No, honey, it's not luck. It's a blessing. You have been blessed and recognize that blessing. I met a little girl named Blessing from Africa who's paying for her schooling uh, at Tri-C and she's like, I've got to pay my way, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, but I will do it. She said, I will do it. God will bless me to do it. I said, yes, he will. And I grabbed her hand and we started praying. That girl's gonna be fine. And she gives credit where the credit belongs because there's really no reason she should be able to go to school. She has no money, but she has found favor. Because God will grant you favor where there, there, there seems to be an impossibility. He does it every day. 
Look for the favor of God in your life. Look to write a stone of remembrance. You don't have to put a rock on a table for every time because you'll have a table full of rocks if you do. So write it down. Add to it every day. As a matter of fact, if you just try it for this week, it's kind of like counting your blessings. Count them for the week. If you can't find a blessing a day, I guarantee you, you're not looking. You're not looking. Look for it. He's doing it every day. And if we're going to pass down anything from generation to generation, pass down the two greatest commandments to your loved ones, the ones that you think aren't listening. When the baby left this morning, I put hands on your head. I said, go to church and be blessed. Have a wonderful time. Angels, please surround this baby as she goes. Help her to grow up to be a mighty woman of God. Love God. Love others. You can put it as simply as that. If there's one thing you want to pass down. Love God. Love others. It wraps up everything. It wraps up everything. And what's the one thing you will pass on? I pray that the thing that you pass on is your love of the Lord. That no one doubts when you're gone. <clears throat> she loved the Lord. My goodness. He loved the Lord. And it was obvious. And it was obvious. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord God, today, and not just today, every day, we remember. We remember, Lord, the sacrifice that was made for us by your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We relive that. We remember, Lord, that you are with us all the time. We remember our favorite scriptures that get us through the day. Father, help us to look for each day for an attitude of gratitude towards you, Lord, to recognize how you move in our lives each and every day. But Father God, help us to be able to take those blessings, to inform other people about it, and to pass on a stone of remembrance so that they will pass it on to someone else. And they will pass it on to someone else. Not just in our immediate family, but in our extended human family. Help us to speak the name of Jesus when we get the chance. To show Jesus when we get the chance. To live Jesus every day. And those times, Lord, when we fall short, and we will... Forgive us as we get back up, dust ourselves off, and continue on this journey that you have given us. We are not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. We thank you. We thank you, and we remember. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.